everybody and welcome to the Mindset Podcast. Today I have a lovely guest, Sonia Grimes. Uh, Sonia is quite local to me and she's kind of been on the periphery of my radar for a wee while now, I would say. Um, I know that she does a radio show and bits and pieces like that that I've heard coming through locally. Uh, but I really know Sonia because she's a recovery coach and she's been on her own really fascinating and empowering journey I would say coming out of addiction uh, and now really shares that story with others and supports them on their own journey to recovery as well uh, so that's how I know Sonia Sonia is that a good introduction or how would you introduce yourself um I would call myself a formerly mad drunk <laughs> fantastic <laughs> which is a uh... Um, not something obviously I'm a proud of, uh, but obviously it's actually not something I'm ashamed of either because of where I am now. I was an alcoholic for 28 years and before that I had been um, a heroin addict. And uh, after the birth of my son 21 years ago, I was desperate, desperately sober. And unfortunately I was unable to get my head around what on earth was going on until four years ago um, where I stopped drinking like that. Uh, I was told that my liver was damaged and that I was going to die. And that you would think, because I adore my son, as we all do our kids, would stop me. Mm. Because I didn't know how to stop, I started drinking more. So I started to write to him to explain why I was going to leave him. It was the most heartbreaking thing I've ever done. And in that writing, I understood myself and I literally stopped. I still have the vodka in the, um, the larder that I didn't touch that day which was just like wow. wow yeah it was it, it was wow well, and now i understand it wasn't it was it was just i was looking in the wrong direction literally looking in the wrong direction hmm. but i think that's that still deserves a wow you know that that's a huge um impactful decision to have made and to move forward from that in that way is incredible um and so many people that come out of addiction can't have you know, that addictive product in the house and the temptation there. So it sounds like your journey has been slightly different to other people. Can you explain a bit more about that? Well, you said a very key word there. You say temptation. I'm not tempted. So um, one of the things I do with my clients, because I coach women now who are trapped in damaging food and alcohol habits, uh, they talk about, it, it, I haven't stopped doing something I want to do. If I still wanted to do it, there would be temptation, but I don't want to do it, so there is no temptation. Does that make sense? Yeah, so it does. Um, I guess to me, I would say like the neural pathway is still there for most people. You know that um, when when they have a trigger of maybe something um, unusual or different happen, it can be very difficult to still reset that neural pathway. Wouldn't you say? Um, I, you know, I, I'm so fascinated by how the brain works and what I think has happened, I sh I'm sure, no, I know that when I stopped drinking, I had, that was it, I knew that, but I, I was shaky, not in my resolve, but as you said again, yourself about the neural pathways, but we have a conscious responsibility to think, okay, I'm used to traveling in this direction, certain things come along, and you have a conscious responsibility to stop and pause and think, is that where I want to go? And no, it's not. And I and go in the other way. And of course, because I've continually gone in the other way, that neural pathway has, it's like a bridge that's collapsed. So I understand what you're saying. And definitely to start with, or well, uh, that, that would have been, because otherwise, where would the happiness have come in? Because as you say, it's a neurological. Um, but I knew every time I would just say, okay, I call myself song. We're not talking about my son, here, song. Is that where you want to be? No, love, it's not. Okay. And just move. And it was, it was as instantaneous as that. And I would imagine I was doing it every day to start with, but I was consistent. And that pathway is like a bridge that's collapsed. I love that, actually. A lot of the work I do around firewalking and, and, and things like that is all about making conscious decisions. Yes. Um, conscious responsibility. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, one of the mantras, the firewalker mantras, if you like, is let it be easy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sometimes we can make it too difficult for ourselves, right? Yeah, I'm writing my second book at the moment, and the part I'm writing at the at the moment is, you know, I did not. I thought I was a weak, useless failure as a drunk, 
And if everywhere you see the people that recover, particularly celebrities who are quite rightly celebrating their sobriety, they, you keep saying it's the hardest thing you'll ever do. Fear everything, fear, feel everything and recover. I mean, that is hugely daunting because if they struggle, suddenly grind with no resources, doesn't got hope in hell. So if you, t like with your fireworking, I always say it's been the easiest and most joyful experience of my life, which it has. And how does that help my clients? It helps them hugely. Yeah, absolutely. So what does your client look like, Sonia? Are they alcoholics or are they people that are just in, you know, maybe unhealthy habits with their drinking but not addicted? I, I, I don't use words like alcoholics. I don't have a problem with using it about myself. I certainly wouldn't use it with a client because they are change paralyzing labels. They are completely change paralyzing labels. Mm. So they, if they're going to come in as uh, uh, a being an, a, addicted to food or addicted to alcohol, they're already starting with a huge baggage on their back. So I don't use words like that. And I talk yeah. to them very careful with them every time they'll say I'll try I always gently correct them with their language because trying is saying it might work it might work or it's a, it, it's the fight of my life well I won't allow that either for them because a fight has two two outcomes win or lose we don't we don't go through that so they are they are trapped in a way of thinking I do not believe they're trapped in what they're doing that's not how my work works I believe that they're trapped I know myself there that they are trapped in the way they are thinking because it's your thinking that creates your feelings not the other way around so you're trapped in the way of thinking you think a certain way you create a feeling and you feel you have to react on that feeling but again it's all your thought processes yeah absolutely absolutely uh, yeah, I had an interesting journey with alcohol myself this year, actually, uh, and I've, I've not quite stopped drinking. I'm having the odd drink still, but I decided to basically all but stop just because I found it was really suppressing yeah. uh, my joy. Uh, yeah. It's an anesthetic. Yeah, absolutely. We need anesthetic, but unfortunately it, it can't choose, or sometimes we feel we need anesthetic, but unfortunately we can't choose what we anesthetize. You know, we retire the whole thing or nothing. And actually, there is no pain that is worse than loss of joy. There's no pain worth that Absolutely. loss. Absolutely. Absolutely. I need to make a note of that. I'm going to write it. Yeah, go on, write it. Write it. It's in my book. Second loss of joy. You said what I'm saying sometimes. Second book. Um, and then? You said you're writing your second book. Um, and yeah. tell us about your first book. Well, I've got it here. Ooh. Oh, yes, it's, it's in reverse, but it's called This Isn't Me. And I wrote it for my son when I stopped drinking because for a variety of reasons, I wanted him to know that it was never him. Obviously, it was never him, but any child's mind, goodness knows what they think. I wanted him to have something to refer to that would explain the chaos, to let him know he always was and always will be my number one. And I, wrote, and I, just, I just wrote it. It took me three weeks. Well, then... When I wrote it, I sent it to a, a lady who said, oh, I'd love to read it. And she was just like, wow, you've got to publish this. So I thought, well, I'll self-publish it because obviously I can give him this. And, he, you know, I don't know what problems he's going to have later in life. I'm not even talking about alcohol, but in his reaction. So this probably will help his wife and his children understand a little bit more about where he came from. Of course, that's yeah. what And then um, it just sold. I, I checked this morning and it sold 40 copies this month. So I put it in 2000, uh, 2017, and it's the basis of my work now, my recovery coaching practice, and it it's just sells consistently. So I thought, right, that was, and everything I wrote then, I stand by absolutely. But of course, I've been on the most incredible, joyful, peaceful, yeah. enlightening journey, and now I'm writing about that to for, for to, to support to support my clients further because the problem I have a little bit is. You're amazing. I couldn't do that. I'm not amazing. I just think you can do. That's all there is to it. And it's in all of us. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We all have that option to make choices for ourselves, don't we? And as you say about choosing your language patterns, about choosing your beliefs. Yes. Um, and, and knowing there's a different way of, of believing. That's, the, that's what was the, the hugest, hugest, the biggest thing for me was, 
we believe our reality. We believe it, but we constructed that reality. And if we constructed it at a time when we had fewer resources, why are we still believing in that reality now when we have greater resources? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So if there's somebody watching at the moment, Sonia, that is thinking, or listening in indeed, you know, that is thinking, gosh, you know, I'm not sure that my relationship with alcohol is, is that healthy or, or, you know, the way I would like it to be. Could you give them a couple of tips of how they might um, get started with bringing about change? Well, the first thing I always say to my clients, you don't have a relationship with alcohol at all. You have a relationship with you. Mm -hmm. We are human design, which I never knew was to live in peace and balance. And alcohol and food has become our way of restoring that peace and balance when we are out of alignment. And because it is not our natural way of living, Anything we do that takes us closer to our natural way of living is easy. It's because we're going back to what we are supposed to be, how we are designed. To be. So, uh, for in practical terms, uh, for tips, when excuse me, can I say? Can I swear? Very small. Oh swear. yeah, go on. I'm a swearer. <laughs> I am too, but not on this. We go into a shitstorm of thinking around alcohol. So, say this with vodka. I want to. I don't want to. Don't be stupid. You're useless. Fuck. Oh, sorry, no, that was a big one. <laughs> and the war inside us is so huge. It's so what we intellectually know and what we feel. And then we, we come apart. And that's where the problem is. Just to pause and take a few deep breaths to still your thinking and ask yourself, darling, I love you. What can I do for you? Yes. What want from you and alcohol and food will never ever come up never it, it, it might be and because we're so not used to listening so i need to rest i need someone to understand me i need to talk to someone i need to be on my own i need to stop something will come up and act on that just pause take a few deep breaths to still yourself to calm the adrenaline and ask you darling i love you what can i do for you yeah and obviously you have to do it consistently but that is that is the tip I use for the first, when if I, I do my clients in uh, three to five sessions and then they might come back again. But that is the one thing I get them to do immediately. And they go away and they do it and they're like, oh my God, it works. And what it's done is it's given them back a little bit of control. I mean, you've got a little bit, your, your boundaries are moved and then all possibilities there because the boundaries of our problems with drinking or alcohol are only the boundaries of our thinking yeah i love that actually i i really do you know one of the things that i teach my clients to do is like the mindfulness three breath check-in yeah so you're just doing those three breaths all mm -hmm. of your focus goes to the breath you know yeah and that just allows you to refocus reground and then make a choice about yeah. what you want to do. Um, and, and, and breathing is a natural, natural thing that is there to help us. It's yeah. not to keep us alive. It's to keep us calm. It's to support us. It's to give us space. And all the things that we do to recover, to, and I don't call myself in recovery, I am recovered, are natural because we are going back to the way we are designed. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, at the end of the day, everybody breathes. So nobody has... Yeah excuse not to do it you know it takes like two minutes kind of idea it, it, yeah. it's just about making that choice isn't it it's huge isn't it you know yourself you see your three minutes that yeah three seconds whatever yeah. just anything to pause to recalibrate who you are yeah absolutely Sonia let's talk about food <laughs> um okay. because so many women god I don't know if I even know a single woman that doesn't have some kind of food issue or you know whatever you want to call it um tell me what you see yeah exactly the same thing yeah i mean food and alcohol are our are, are goes to to offer self-comfort and of course food is more um prevalent in lots of ways although alcohol is very swiftly taking up because it's what we used as a child or what was given to us as a child yeah 
So when we were hurt or upset or afraid and, or, or just fell over and grazed our knees, we didn't have the emotional re repair toolkit we have now. We couldn't articulate. So we were given something that offered us a level of comfort. Yeah. Remember that. And, and that's it. I mean, I was a binge eater and purger uh, as well. I'm bulimic. And um, I don't have a relationship with food in the same way I don't have a relationship with alcohol. Well, I have more of a relationship with food, obviously, because I've got to eat it. But then you have to drink as well. It doesn't have to be alcohol. So actually, it's the same. I don't have a relationship with, uh, excuse me, crap. I don't know why I'm worried about crap after what I just said. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't have a relationship with crap uh, food. I, I, I pause. I could easily, I could easily think hard i'm fed the other day actually i did my son works in Wenzel's and they do these little yogurts and uh, not yogurts trifles and he bought two home ah. one for me one for him and i ate them and the very next day i thought what did you do that for oh i just felt i was tired i talked to myself i talked to myself i communicate with who i am it's tired i was fed up and what could i have done instead well, i could have gone for a walk i could have watched a bit of netflix on the tv and i just pause recalibrated i don't beat myself up about it Apart from that, there's no flipping point, and you move on. So I view food and alcohol as exactly the same. It's a form of self-comfort. It's, it's the way we try to reconnect with ourselves. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, th I think the food thing is so prevalent at the moment, isn't it? And encouraging people to start making those choices about food. And as you say, to realise that they're are other options and that they're they're in a narrow a narrow corridor they can open that up and make other choices yeah. um rather than this awful 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 dieting no I, it, breaks my heart. it breaks my heart the energy that goes into doing something completely unnatural is i mean our energy is so important i do gratitude every day even in the rain i go out my dad died in october and it's been the most Honestly, joyful experience, sad, but joyful experience of my life. Because that's where I've chosen to take it. Uh, thank you for mum. They're both dad. Thank you for dad. Thank you for my brothers and sisters. And build that energy up. And to waste that life-giving, life-enhancing energy on a bloody diet is, is so unfair. And you know what? I say this to all my clients. The weight loss industry is the only billion dollar industry that consistently fails its clients and still grows. Yeah. It's incredible. It still grows. You wouldn't buy a car that consistently bloody broke down, but you'll go to the next diet. Yeah. God, that is so true, actually. So true. I'm going to make a note of that one. Yeah, no, I, I use that a lot. You know, and, and it's all built to focus on our deepest emotional needs our deepest emotional neglect yeah. tells us who we are it, it doesn't it doesn't tell us anything no just it, try to label um i think particularly women though it is men as well label them as being a bit, uh, bad at, at what they do um, failure is actually what they label them as a failure yeah. tells you as a failure as having no willpower as being weak and you're none of those things you're not built to be that way and we are focused again, we don't stop and we don't breathe. And it is, and I tell this to all my clients and they all get it, it is the only billion dollar industry that consistently fails its clients and continues to grow. Yeah, that is crazy. <laughs> I, that says so much about the world we are living in, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Yeah, gosh. How about your son, Sonia? How old is he? Do you mind me asking? He's just 21, we went to... Uh -huh. Yeah, we went to New York for his 21st. I was going to treat him. And my best friend, who's also his, his mum, was going to treat her son. And this would have been unheard of four years ago. I told him, this is what you're doing. I'll be going for four days. Um, I was going to do a family party, but then I say my dad died. And I just thought, no, I want something. Yeah. And he said, I'd rather go with you, mum. Now, considering how I was as a, an unstable, emotionally neglectful mother, that's quite incredible. Mm. And we had a wonderful time, and I've never been so flipping tired. I'm 55. I cannot walk the way a 21 walks. We walk four miles at miles. Nice. <laughs> a nightmare. No, it was lovely. Aww. 
<laughs> that was lovely. So yeah, we're in a we're in a great space. We're in a great space. I'm a, a master practitioner of NLP, which has helped me hugely help him because we talk a lot. Yeah. But pretend I never pretend something was that it wasn't. But because I know how to communicate with him, I see the shifts in his face and understanding. And of course, I could say I'm sorry every day, but that would put him in the place of saying it's okay, mum. Well, actually, it isn't. But what he needs to see is not hear me talk. He needs to see me walk, and he does every day. Brilliant. I love that. I love that. And he must be so proud of you at the end of the day. He is. He yeah. is. And I'm so proud of him because the level of emotional intelligence and tolerance and forgiveness and understanding actually will stand him in good stead for the rest of his life. It really will. And it, I can't undo anything that happened. I cannot change one single thing. But I am a person to be proud of and love now. And he knows that and he sees it. Brilliant. He knows and he sees it. Yeah. I think what you just said as well is a really key thing, isn't it? You know, you can't change what's happened. You know, so many people live in a world of regret that actually pushes them further into their addiction or their habit, you know. Um, and the reality is we can never change what's happened, even two minutes ago. So worrying about it or, uh, uh, is a pointless way to be. It is pointless. It's also very, I mean, uh, there's not to say I don't have regrets, but I don't view them as regrets because, as you said, and that will, that will yeah. damage me, which will damage him, and we don't need that. What I think of them as, as learnings. Yeah, exactly. I didn't know what I know now, and what I know now I act on consistently, and now what I know I coach other women on to be uh, at peace. I have a couple of ladies. One of them has drunk for 15 years every day. She doesn't drink. Yes, she's had the odd stumble. And I said to her, thank God you have, because that's where you learn. Those are where you learn. You learn, you get up, you recalibrate, you take all the learning on board, and you make a different choice next time. So, Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So that's a great place, Sonia, to say, you know, if somebody is listening in or watching and they're thinking, gosh, I could do with this woman's help, where can people find you? Well, I'm called my... my uh, Sonia Grimes, the recovery coach. So that's on the net. My website is simply soniagrimes.com. Not simply, it's Sonia yeah. Grimes. <laughs> and my email address is sonia at soniagrimes.com. So basically, look up Sonia Grimes. Um, the book, I think, comes up first. Uh, it's got 95% five star rating on Amazon and it's been highest rated on Goodreads. So I'm really thrilled about that. Yeah. Um, and it's just Sonia Grimes. Brilliant. And I will put some links. I think they will actually be above the video, not below. They'll be above okay. the video. So if you're watching on the website, um, then if you look up above the video, you will see a link to Sonia's website and a link to the book. So um, Well, the book's on the website anyway. So. Oh, it? oh, fantastic. Well, we can still do it on Amazon. Thank you. Yeah. Belts Thank and you. braces and all that. Let's make it easy <laughs> for people. <laughs> Thank you, Lottie. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Well, you know, the thing is that if one person reads your book and, and it can be impactful and make a difference for them, then, then why would I not? Why Thank you. It does, it does make a difference. And actually that was not why I wrote it. And it was picked up by a literary agent. And when that happened, I thought I better read it again. And when I read it again, I was like, Oh my God, because I had written it as is for the eyes of my son and his family. Now, had I, his future family, now, had I had any thoughts that it would even sell the way it does now, I probably <laughs> wouldn't. I would have written a slightly different one for him and not exposed myself completely. But it's, it's, it's the being honest about where I was that gives me the credibility because I am, I do, I am what I appear to be. I'm yeah. We had a great guest on a few weeks ago, Dipti Tay. I don't know if you've um, heard of Dipti. So she's um, no, I haven't. NLP and things like that as well. Um, she's a grief strategist. So she works oh. with people, uh, that are experiencing loss. And her own book was exactly the same. You know, she wrote it coming out of loss um, to help herself to come out of that process. Um, yeah. And how it sells so well. Yes. Because other people are finding it impactful. Yes. As yeah. well. So I think sometimes it's just our own stories and, or we say just our own story, but we can forget how 
impactful that can be for somebody else. I think one of the things is we forget when we're in such a mess ourselves, we forget that our mess is universal. Yeah. I mean, grief is, is universal. We are all going to experience it. Yeah. And there's going, to be some, there's going to be a lot that people will recognize. And there'll be things, depending on the relationship, that people won't recognize, but, re, re, um, identify with. But everyone who is grieving will get something from a book like that. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm sure it's exactly the same as yours. I have to hold my hand up and say I've never read it. So when we get off uh, speaking today, I'm going to go and get myself a copy. Uh, <laughs> You'll be shocked. <laughs> oh, takes a lot to shock me. Mm, this might do it. <laughs> it takes a lot to shock me. So look, Sonia, thanks so much for joining us today. Um, if people are listening in, I hope you've found this uh, useful and helpful in some way do look Sonia up and find out a bit more about her maybe give her a follow on social media and of course if you have any questions or anything you think that she can help you with then do feel free to reach out um, good yep yeah. so for now we are going to say goodbye bye everyone thank you thank you so much for having me Lottie I really enjoyed that you're really welcome Sonia bye now bye 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 Thank you.